It was about 8.30 a.m. thereabouts. I got a weird taste in my mouth. It was metallic. Shortly after investigating with my tongue, I realized that my left side of my face was getting numb. Before I could find out what was going on, my left eye couldn't blink normally. And in quick thought, I remembered the colleague seated with me in this meeting we were in was a doctor, and I told him what I was going through. And he immediately told me, leave this meeting and go to the hospital and get checked. Which I did with speed. I was checked. My blood pressure was through the roof. I got medicine, but it was not clear yet what was going on. So I thought of getting a second opinion, and I, went to, I came to Nairobi. In Nairobi, the neurologist did a few tests, and he told me what I was suffering from. Bell's palsy. I was shell-shocked. Many thoughts went through my mind. I did not know what was going on. Is this the moment that I would implode from within? Is this what my life had become? This is my story. For more than 15 years, I'd enjoyed a good run in my media career. I had it all, fame, celebrity status, and a career that I had dreamt of. And I lived it, to be on TV, to be on stage, be in films, and I did it all. And in the same 15 years, I met my lovely wife, Nyambura, and God blessed us with two sons, Tendai and Kiran. I appeared in numerous TV commercials, went abroad to shoot them, featured in films, even won that won an Academy Award. I don't, I'm not sure if you had anything to do with that. <laughs> in 2014, I got an opportunity to go and work in public service. I was appointed as the Director of Communications at the County Government of Nakuru. Taking it up meant moving back to a county that I was born and raised in. For me, it was an honor, an opportunity to play a role in shaping Nakuru's story in the era of devolution. However, it also meant leaving behind everything. It meant dropping everything that had defined me for such a long time. Unfortunately, I did not move with my family, so it ended up being a long-distance relationship. Now, I had to supplement my salary, which I dipped after taking the county job. And like many other men would have done, I ventured into business. I ended up committing my full salary to service these loans, but the hole got even deeper. Everything I had planned to do at that time collapsed, face flat. So one thing led to another. I betrayed my marriage. I separated from my wife due to infidelity. Missed my children. And this killed me every single day and night. And I'm still trying to make up for that. Things led to other things, making the wrong choices, making the bad decisions, and the consequences were dire. With no proper income coming through, I was kicked out of my rented house twice and got auctioned once. My friend Alan put me up the two times and I had to do something unthinkable. At 39 years of age, I went back home, knocked on the door, and I told my mom I failed. It was extremely painful. On the surface, I kept a straight face. But deep down, I was burning. And several times, I wanted to let go. My mom was my beacon of light through these rough waters that I'd thrown myself into. She was there for me. Some of my friends walked away into the horizon. They went. I came to terms with that. But I need to appreciate and acknowledge friends and strangers who stood by me, held my hand in these dark moments. So last year, 2017, my run at the county government came to a close. I didn't have a family to go to. My marriage was collapsing at the verge of a divorce. So I decided to pack my little bag and go to the coast. Hmm? Easy escape, eh? <laughs> Thanks to some short-term gigs here and there, I had to even sell some of my personal items just to get by. 
I ended up in Ukunda. More specifically, Diani. And you know how that story goes, eh? Kuingia ni arusi, kutoka ni? Right. So one morning, I walked into a bakery, and I sat down, and this guy behind me greeted me, and he told me his name was Peter, and he introduced himself as the owner of the bakery. He recognized me as that guy of TV. Ah, when you let my TV, eh? I wanted, to put, I, wanted the, I wanted the ass to open, I fall in, and... This was my Damascus moment. But that time, I'd spent almost four hours conversing with Peter, and he went on his knees and prayed for me, something that shocked me. He told me I needed to go back home. I need to go back to my family. He pushed me every day as we became friends. But unfortunately, the demons kept on winning this battle all through. One day, I get a call from my wife, Nyambura. She tells me to go to Nairobi and attend a school meeting for our firstborn son. And we had not been talking for a long time. First, there was apprehension. There was bitterness, selfishness in me. Peter urged me to go. We prayed about it. And that was the last day I called Okunda home. Now, when I got to Nairobi, this was the tail end of a vicious cycle that I'd gone through. The pain, the hurt that I'd caused, Nothing mattered anymore but my children, my wife, my family, and putting my life back in order again. It was not easy. Reconciliation between me and my wife was work in progress. And I must say, we are healing in a manner that I can't really describe. We've had many uncomfortable moments together through this reconciliation period, but we've worked on it, and we are still working on it every day. This... My children had to learn how to love them again, be curious about them, and understand that it's me they need more and not the other way around. My fellow men, I've learned many priceless lessons in this period, and I would like to share it with you here tonight. Because at the end of it all, when all is said and done, we must recognize that being perfect is a fairy tale. Failure, scarcity, and shortcomings are all part of being a man, a father, a husband. Openness, honesty, communication are key to your relationship with your partners. But sometimes, in a After all is said and done, self-pity is our number one enemy because it attracts to you helpless self-indulgence. And if that happens, focus on other things. Beware of excessive self-absorption and self-pity that robs us men the exercise of love, care, and many other things. After all is said and done, get close to your children. You don't have to feel strong and courageous to do this. Children need their fathers regardless what dad is going through inside. One of the gifts I'd like to give to my children is to demonstrate to them that you can recover from failure and keep moving. <laughs> By the way, this is to everyone here. Be grateful that you don't look like the problems and the challenges that we go through. <laughs> I'm not proud of what I've done, but I'm proud of what I've become, and I can be through the lessons that I've learned. There is more to you than your temporary setbacks. You've got what it takes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.